Can the real Kamala Harris please stand up? Because it appears we have a controversy. Coming out of the swing states of Pennsylvania and Michigan, something has finally surfaced that calls everything into question. And there is absolutely no hiding from this. It is on record. And that is the story I'm going to bring you in just one minute. Can't tell you how excited I am to bring you this storyline. Before we do, if you haven't subscribed to Lisa's channel or you think you're subscribed, can you please double check or be a new subscriber? Can't tell you how much that means to her. She'll put a link to my channel above. We'd love you to subscribe there also. We've had a rough week this week. I know uh, Lisa's gotten you up to speed on Diesel. He's one of our little fur babies, one of two. He's had a rough week, battle with cancer, but good news is it appears He's on the men. Beginning of the week was a much different story. Nonetheless, there's many things Lisa believes in. Her audience, you, is one thing she has always believed in so much that she created another platform. She came to me one day and says, look, I want to do something where I can bring the news in my format. No commercials, no sponsors, no interruptions. If you believe in what she's doing, if you believe in what I'm doing, please support us. Get to RestrictedRepublic.com today. I can't tell you how many coming into this election have gone over there to get the stories you can't get anywhere else. Right now, use discount code INDEPENDENCE, $4 a month for two years. You can cancel any time. We would adore and love if you can get over there. Be a part of our Restricted Republic family. We're working every day and continually plugging content into that platform. All the references and resources always provided. Please get there now, RestrictedRepublic.com. But now let's get back to this story. Kamala flip-flops. I wish I would have invested in this because it would have made me a million dollars because it is absolutely true. She is flip-flop day in and day out. She supports fracking. She doesn't support fracking. Changes it all the time, depending on what campaign officials say. Medicare for all, not Medicare for all. We can continue to roll forward. She backed Joe Biden's Supreme Court reform. Maybe they'd be court packing. Nah, I really don't want to do court packing. Absolutely, I stand against it. Like Biden, Harris does not support expanding the court campaign, spokesperson told Hill. Well, that was until a few days ago. Kamala Harris shocks the nation. I'll pack the Supreme Court with far left activist justices. Who is the real Kamala Harris? Does anybody know? Do people who are voting for her even know? Does she support the federal job guarantee? Nah, no more. That's off the table too. I guess it depends on whatever the voters want to hear is the way she tends to waver in the wind. She wanted to defund the police. That is abundantly obvious. But now, her promises campaign Harris has made so far in her campaign, the Harris campaign has also walked back the defund sentiment. Well, that was until a couple days ago where it comes out that she dishes out six-figure donations to groups who support defunding the police. Is it left? Is it right? Is it up? Is it down? I don't even think Kamala is sure anymore. Kamala Harris, Decision 2020. I support a mandatory buyback program. Well, that was then until just a couple days ago. Hello, Dana. Mandatory buybacks on AR-15s and similar guns is one of the handful of policies the VP is walking back on since launching her campaign. A Harris campaign spokesperson tells us that the vice president would no longer require this, but that's, of course, despite her comments that she made while running for president in 2019. Once again, will the real Kamala Harris please stand up? There's pandering, then there's out and out indecision, or simply covering up for what the actual agenda is so the voters don't know until she's elected, of which she'll reverse back to her original positions that nobody likes. And that is a very unfortunate truth. But then comes this. This is something entirely different now. A lot of politicians waver back and forth. Trump on a couple things, but pretty steadfast in his primary beliefs. Kamala, however, I don't know how anyone can tell you what her primary beliefs are because they change every day. But again, not the worst thing you could do. The worst thing you could do 
is actually tell two entirely different stories to two different voter bases and expect them both to believe you. And there is no more evidence than what I'm going to show you here. This is the background of Facebook that tracks ads, who they're going to, what age, what gender, how many impressions, how much they spend, and what location. I'm going to go full screen so you see this. Because voters now in Pennsylvania and Michigan have called, well, we're not sure which Kamala it is, actually. There appears to be two because they're saying two entirely different things over the same ad period. This one again in Pennsylvania. So the statement she always makes, let me be clear. Well, Kamala, you're never clear, ever clear, but I digress. And let's listen to the message you are telling voters in Pennsylvania. We're going to start there, okay? Let me be clear. I will always stand up for Israel's right to defend itself, and I will always ensure Israel has the ability to defend itself, because the people of Israel must never again face the horror that a terrorist organization called Hamas caused on October 7. You know, if you believed in it, maybe people would believe in you more, but it can't say something different to those folks now not in Pennsylvania, but those folks out, let's see here, oh, in Michigan. I hope you see that. I'm going to point it out for you real quick. This is the location, Michigan. Prior, we were out, and I'll show you again just so you know how this all works and how clear-cut it is. This was going to Pennsylvania voters. You heard the message. Major support of Israel. Hamas cannot prosper. Hamas, who is located in Gaza, and it's why Israel is attacking there so often. And it's why Israel continues to attack Gaza. But, again, you have to stand for something or you'll fall for anything. And Kamala is no exception to this. Listen to what she has to say, at least this Kamala, because we're not sure which one we're actually talking to anymore. What in Gaza over the past nine months is devastating. We cannot allow ourselves to become numb to the suffering, and I will not be silent. Our common humanity compels us to act. I'm confused. Kamala, do you support Israel? Or are you looking for an end to everything because you won't remain silent? But Actually, I love the fact that you don't remain silent because every time you speak, you show a different person to your voter base, so much so that it's fragmented your voter base. You're actually decelerating in swing states and you're allowing Trump a huge advantage. So I guess continue on. But if that wasn't enough, you just heard there. Kamala Harris, VP Harris, has been working to end the suffering in Gaza. The only way to end that is to end the war in Gaza. But then you can't say that Israel has the right to defend itself against Hamas, who's located in Gaza. I know it's diff difficult. It's international politics. It's it's really advanced study. Okay. I, and I understand. You're probably more of a, you know, 101 girl. But international politics is not 101? It's not 202 or 303. It's well advanced beyond that. You would need some experience to actually be a commander in chief. And good commanders in chief are very resolute individuals. You, however, are not. So much so that not one advertising campaign going out to Pennsylvania supporting Israel, but another support of the Israeli people by putting your husband into an ad campaign. I'll just play a few seconds of it. When was the last time you cried? Um, there's a mezuzah at the vice president's residence. It might have been then because my father cried. So, hey, tell me that story. Yeah, so we wanted to have a mezuzah, uh, which is a you know very traditional Jewish item. It's a little Torah portion inside. And you put it on your on your doorpost. I don't know. Maybe Maybe she's juggling. I don't like anyone who panders. For votes and you got to stand for something again or like what's happening in your campaign it will 
fall for anything and it has fallen so who is harris campaign ads amplify different parts of her message on gaza and israel in michigan and pennsylvania because all you care about is getting the vote and that's not fair to the voter who has no idea what you stand for how do you not have that common decency and respect for the voters to give them what you actually represent do you think that little of them that they'll simply vote for you even without resolute answers well unfortunately i'm sure we're going to see millions on top of millions and i'm glad people voted but even cnn tries to cover it a little bit campaigns tailor their message to different groups of voters all the time and the practice has only become more sophisticated in the digital era that's not a good cover yes do you tailor your message specific to your audience doesn't mean that you vary your policy if you're talking to farmers in the middle of Nebraska, you're probably going to speak differently about your message and how it relates to them as you would to stockbrokers in Wall Street. Just say it. So CNN, bad cover up, but we don't expect anything less. There's a lot of mixed messaging though, isn't there? But it's benefiting Trump. Trump goes out to Michigan. It's good to see you, Mr. President. Bring it home on Tuesday. What does Kamala get when she shows up in Michigan? Exactly what she deserves based on the mixed messaging I just showed you because now people are aware of it and calling her out. And they are not very happy. Not a good reaction in a very important swing state, Kamala. I know, probably keeping you awake at night. Actually, I saw you dozing off in the plane. It gets exhausting, doesn't it? Isn't this whole campaigning stuff kind of tiring? It's probably even more tiring to keep up with what you think you represent for the day, depending on which voter you want to get their vote for. I know that could be exhausting, brutally exhausting. I'm so sorry for you. Maybe, maybe you and Joe should go out and get some ice cream because it appears to be the one thing, well, you guys could do right because there hasn't been anything else but talk about mixed messaging or actually don't you love the term i'm sure you do fake news misinformation well wouldn't it be that if you took a clip out of context played it for something it wasn't representing and then point the finger of blame at trump of course because many of you may have heard this 11 second clip it's very important i'm going to go large screen on this and then I'm going to play the full clip after I play the reaction to this clip and show you exactly how misinformation and manipulation actually works. Walk. Let's put her with a rifle standing there with nine barrels shooting at her, okay? Let's see how she feels about it. You know, when the guns are trained on her face. That's the clip. That's the clip that so many millions in America heard, except it's not the entire clip but i'm going to show you the reaction before i play the entire clip because they all knew what it was at least some claim they knew what it was cassie hunt here donald trump suggests liz cheney should be fired upon it's an escalation of violent rhetoric listen in here as she speaks she's upset she's angry it's not right but she took it out of context Four days out from Election Day, and former President Donald Trump is escalating his violent rhetoric, suggesting one of his most prominent critics, the former pr Congresswoman Liz Cheney, should be fired upon. Man, you're bringing that out to millions of people, aren't you? You're bringing that forward to millions of people. Liz Cheney reacting. This is how dictators destroy free nations. They threaten those who speak against them with death. We cannot entrust our country and our freedom to a petty, vindictive, cruel, unstable man who wants to be a tyrant. Heard that over and over again from Liz Cheney, haven't we? Hmm. Now, let's not play what they left out yet. Let's put out another person. Listen to this reaction, and then I'm going to tell you what he had to do afterwards. I don't think you even need to call it fired upon. He's saying quite explicitly and unambiguously that Liz Cheney should be shot, should be executed by firing squad. That is appalling. It is a small facet of, of the reasons why he's unfit for office, and the Republican Party has made a disastrous mistake renominating him. All that said, since we're here for the punditry, um, 
I don't know what this gets him, right? Wow, you stood strong on your ground, didn't you? Jonah Goldberg there, he had to come back out. This morning on CNN, I referred to Trump's rifles, quote, as him advocating a firing squad for Liz Cheney. I was reacting in haste to what were objectively appalling and irresponsible comments that had been framed in the setup piece in the context of previous statements Trump made about shooting protesters and having generals executed. Still, I was wrong to say he was calling for a firing squad execution. After I said that, my co-panelist, Brad Todd, made the case why I was wrong. And why did he make the case that he was wrong? Because I don't think he listened to the full clip. Rather embarrassing. Of course, these folks don't get embarrassed. They just roll forward with the lies normally. It was nice that he issued somewhat of an apology. But it should have been a lot larger. As a matter of fact, everyone who talked bad about this clip should have probably told their audience there was a larger clip, actually listened to the larger clip, and told the truth. But we can't expect that out of mainstream media anymore, can we? Here is the full clip. And I don't blame him for sticking with his daughter, but his daughter is a very dumb individual, very dumb. <laughs> She's a radical war hawk. Let's put her with a rifle standing there with nine barrels shooting at her, okay? Let's see how she feels about it. You know, when the guns are trained on her face. You know, they're all war hawks when they're sitting in Washington in a nice building saying, oh, gee, Will, let's uh, send uh, Let's send 10,000 troops right into the mouth of the enemy. But she's a stupid person. Well, that's a little bit different of the context now, isn't it? Interesting. So the man who doesn't want forever war, the man who kept us out of conflict, is talking about another politician who likes to put our soldiers in harm's way and votes to put them in harm's way. So makes a reference to how would it feel if you were on the battlefield then the decision wouldn't be quite so easy now, would it? Because you would feel like our soldiers do who have guns trained on them. You see the different context there? Again, Trump consistent in his message. Mainstream media snipping it out, putting it out, trying to change people's minds based on false and misinformation. But yet, they're never the ones that get in trouble now, are they? Now they issue apologies. The world moves along and Trump suffers again. But we're not going to allow that here ever. We'll put it in context. Trust me, if he says something wrong, I'll be the first to tell you. I don't care. I want the best politicians in the jobs that they deserve. Right now, the best politician for the presidency is Donald J. Trump. There is no other choice because we don't actually know who the other candidate is. And I just proved it again for you. I love y'all. Thanks for letting me fill in for Lisa today. She's spending a little time with DZ, finally relaxing. He's feeling better. She's feeling better. And that was a much needed reprieve from earlier this week. I love y'all. Thanks for hanging in there with us. Until next time, Godspeed and God bless. Justice Knight, signing out. <laughs>